Truganini was born around the year 1812 on Bruni Island, a beautiful stretch of land located off the southeastern coast of Tasmania, Australia. Truganini's father was a man called Mangana and was chief of the Bruni tribe, also called the Bruni Island people. This group of indigenous Tasmanians spoke a now extinct language called Nunoni, known more simply as Bruni Island Tasmanian. In this language, the word Truganini was what they used to describe grey saltbush. During Truganini's early youth, she had a typical Nunoni upbringing, being able to experience the traditional culture of her tribe, yet from a young age, she also faced many tragedies. As a young girl, it's believed that she witnessed whalers stab her mother to death for refusing to go with them. During her early teenage years, she watched how fellow Nunani women were lured away from camp for sex in exchange for other goods such as tea and sugar. Sealers and whalers ravaged the Tasmanian coast for years, but it was with the arrival of European settlers that her way of life was not only disrupted, but ended. Tasmania, known as Van Diemen's Land until its name was changed in 1865, was discovered by Europeans hundreds of years before, in 1642, by a Dutch explorer called Abel J. Tasman. Yet, it wasn't until 1803 that a significant number of Europeans, mainly British, started to settle on the island. Over the next few months, several violent clashes broke out between the new settlers and the indigenous Tasmanians, whose population numbered anywhere between 3,000 to 5,000. In February 1804, David Collins, the founding Lieutenant Governor of the colony of Van Diemen's Land, made his way to the British colony and promptly established the town of Hobart, which is the island's present day capital. He also received word from London that any acts of violence against the Aboriginal people by Europeans were to be punished. However, the Lieutenant Governor failed to publish these instructions. This would go on to have dire consequences for the island and its people. As the years passed, more Europeans arrived on the island. Some had settled there, but most were convicts who had been transported to the penal colony. Furthermore, violence between the settlers and the natives increased. It's said that during the first 20 years of settlement, the indigenous tribes launched at least 57 attacks on the settlers. By the year 1820, violence on Tasmania was commonplace. One Russian explorer stated that the natives of Van Diemen's land live in a state of perpetual hostility against the Europeans. With the sharp rise in offensive attacks from both sides of the conflict, it developed into a war. The motives behind the attacks from the native tribes was mainly due to revenge for European atrocities, which included the kidnapping and forced sexual abuse of Aboriginal women and girls, and the murder of Aboriginal men. Also, the island's game had diminished since the arrival of Europeans. This resulted in some native Tasmanians plundering the settlers' homes out of hunger. Meanwhile, European violence was driven by a wide range of factors, including revenge, killing for sport, suppression of the native threat, and a sexual desire for women. This last factor was a result of the island being a penal colony, and because of this, the male colonist population outnumbered females around 6 to 1. In 1823, George Arthur was appointed as Van Diemen's Land new Lieutenant Governor. Throughout the 1820s, he implemented various measures to protect the settlers from Aboriginal attacks but these proved ineffective as violence only continued to rise. As the death toll piled up, Arthur expressed great regret regarding the conflict, believing that the situation could have been avoided if the first settlers would have just signed a treaty with the natives when the colony was established. This conflict had led to Truganini losing almost all of her loved ones. Not only had her mother died years before, but her first fiancé was murdered by timber cutters while saving her from abduction. 
and two of her sisters had been abducted by sealers and sold as slaves. Nevertheless, under Arthur's governance, there were some attempts to establish friendly relations with the Tasmanian Aboriginals. In 1829, George Augustus Robinson launched a friendly mission with the aim of protecting the native people. His intentions were thought to be initially genuine, starting out by distributing rations. However, he then made a series of unfulfilled promises in order to persuade many of the natives to surrender, later resettling them at the camp of Waibalena on Flinders Island, far away from any European settlements. This campaign began on Bruni Island among Truganini's people, as interactions between the Bruni tribe and Europeans had been less hostile than in other parts of Tasmania. In 1829, Truganini married a man called Wuradi, and together with Robinson, they left Bruni Island in January 1830, accompanying him on his so-called friendly mission. For the next five years, Truganini served as Robinson's guide and translator, teaching him the local customs and language. Robinson recorded this five-year journey over the whole island in his journal. Robinson used various methods to persuade the natives. One was fear. He warned them that if they carried on fighting, it would result in their total annihilation. He also promised that they would be able to return to the mainland, but this was untrue. Slowly but surely, with the help of Truganini, who simply wanted to protect her people, he encouraged other groups of native Tasmanians to move to Flinders Island. Apparently, escape from the island was deemed impossible. This isolation, away from the Europeans, was meant to protect them, but in the years that followed, many died from diseases which the settlers inadvertently brought with them. However, despite this friendly policy, violence continued. So in August 1830, the Lieutenant Governor Arthur managed to get approval for a declaration of martial law. This essentially provided legal immunity to any settlers who killed native people. This was accompanied by the military offensive known as the Black Line, which intended to drive the indigenous population away from the colony settled districts and confine them to the Tasman Peninsula in the southeast. For a time, there were also bounties awarded for anyone who captured or even killed the indigenous Tasmanians. Over the next few years, the settlers took over the island, with all the surviving Tasmanians having been moved to Flinders Island. By the time the conflict, later known as the Black War, was over, the native population had been reduced to around 100 people. In 1839, Truganini, her husband, and other native Tasmanians accompanied Robinson to Port Phillip, Australia, where he was appointed as protector of the Aboriginals. At some point during this time, reports state that she gave birth to a baby girl named Louisa Esme, yet it's thought that she was separated from her daughter, who went on to be raised by the Kulin nation. Truganini later left Robinson and her husband behind, joining a smaller group of Aboriginals as outlaws. Together they robbed and attacked settlers from around Dandenong. The local police quickly got word of this and started to track down the outlaws. Truganini followed the group as they made their way to the Bass River and then to Cape Patterson. The end for the group would come when members took the lives of a pair of whalers. It wasn't too long after this that the group was captured, tried and sentenced. For the murder of the whalers, which occurred at Port Phillip, two of the men belonging to the outlaw group were hanged. While in custody, Truganini was treated by Dr. Hugh Anderson, as she had suffered a shot to the head. Following this, the Tasmanian natives were returned to their so-called sanctuary on Flinders Island. Truganini's husband was on the same boat back to Tasmania, however, he didn't survive the journey. After years in isolation, in 1856, the surviving group of Tasmanians were moved to a settlement at Oyster Cove, south of Hobart. While there, 
Truganini was able to live as she had done during the early years of her life. She enjoyed diving for shellfish, hunting in the nearby bush, and visiting Bruny Island every spring. In 1861, the Times newspaper wrote an article on the surviving indigenous Tasmanians with the title, Decay of Race. In the piece, they quote a report issued by the Colonial Office regarding the number of survivors, which stated, 14 persons, all adults, aboriginals of Tasmania, who are the sole surviving remnant of the 10 tribes. None of these persons are women, and five are men. There are among them four married couples, and four of the men and five of the women are under 45 years of age, but no children have been born to them for years. It is considered difficult to account for this. Besides these 14 persons, there is a native woman who was married to a white man, and who has a son, a fine healthy looking child. As well as this, the article mentioned that the survivors living at Oyster Cove were allowed to go on hunting trips to the bush, if they asked. It went on to add that all of them were fed, housed and clothed at public expense. Also, most of them were generally healthy, but were also much addicted to drinking. While living at Oyster Cove, she met William Laney, who was known as the last full-blooded Aboriginal Tasmanian man. Despite being around 23 years younger than her, he died years before, on the 3rd of March 1869, aged just 34. As time went on, the few survivors started to pass away from natural causes and diseases. By 1873, Truganini was the only person from the Oyster Cove group who was still alive. She was then moved to Hobart. Now around 60 years old, she sat for many photographers who were eager to capture the last Tasmanian. Before the end of her life, Truganini requested to colonial authorities that her ashes be scattered in the Dantre Castel channel, the body of water that separates Burney Island from the rest of Tasmania. The reason she made this petition was because the body of William Laney didn't receive a proper burial. Instead, his corpse was preserved for scientific purposes. She died on the 8th of May, 1876, aged around 63 in Hobart, Tasmania. Truganini was later buried in the Cascades Female Factory, which had been a workhouse for female convicts, located just outside of the city. Unfortunately, her petition was not carried out. Just two years after her burial, her skeleton was exhumed by the Royal Society of Tasmania and later placed on display. However, almost a hundred years after her death, in April 1976, her dying wish was finally fulfilled as her remains were cremated and scattered in the Dantre Castel channel. Truganini is often considered to be the last full-blooded speaker of a Tasmanian language, yet this isn't true. Most believe this as she was the most famous of her people. Reports tell of other native Tasmanians who outlived Truganini, living on Kangaroo Island, Flinders Island and Lady Barron Island. Many consider the last full-blooded Tasmanian to be Fanny Cochrane Smith, who even recorded songs in her native language, although some speculated that she was actually of European heritage. Thank you everyone for watching this video on Truganini, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave me a like and a comment down below. If you're new, why not subscribe? Make sure to have notifications turned on. And if you have any suggestions, please leave me a comment or send me an email, which is found in the description below. Anyway, that's all from me. So I'll see all of you in the next Forgotten Life. Thanks.